Like many things recently, the art of filmmaking has been forced to undergo a big rethink. Stock footage, user-generated content and Zoom recordings have become the norm. As time passes, however, formalised filming safety guidelines are starting to appear and are giving production companies and their clients the confidence to start filming again. The key is putting COVID-19 safety at the heart of everything, informing every aspect of decision-making at every stage of the production. During a recent shoot for artist Lois O'Hara, our first since lockdown, we decided to document the process. We followed the APA COVID-19 shooting guidelines, which at the time of filming seemed to be the most trusted and comprehensive in the UK. Here's how we did it. From the start, we made the decision that everything should be filmed outside in well-ventilated spaces. Almost all pre-production was remote and digital. Meetings via Hangouts, cloud documentation and recce via Google Earth. We kept the crew to an absolute minimum. We had the director, DOP, sound recordist, plus a dedicated COVID-19 officer to enforce all aspects of production safety. The APA guidelines were emailed to all participants, including the COVID-19 health declaration form. It essentially states that you've been adhering to UK government guidelines, that you haven't recently shown COVID symptoms, and provides a personal contact in case of emergency. The kit list needs good consideration too. Promotion Hire provided a full frame 8K red Monstro with Canon Sumi Ray Primes. The combo gave a premium aesthetic with the ability to punch in and post, ruling out the need for a second camera. At Promotion Hire, our priority has been to ensure that our buildings are safe for all our staff and visitors, promoting and enforcing our hygiene and COVID secure policies. These policies have been created based on government advice and have industry approval. Once the job has been confirmed, our technicians will begin to prepare your equipment. They will start by washing their hands and will continue to sanitise frequently throughout the process. When the prep is complete, the equipment will be re-sanitised by a technician who will use single-use gloves and wipe down all the equipment touch points. The bags and cases will also have our brand new sanitised labels. If we are delivering the equipment with one of our drivers, they will be wearing PPE and we have also implemented contactless equipment handovers. Production. Everyone arrived in their own vehicles or on foot. There was no car sharing or use of public transport. On arrival, every crew member sanitizes their hands carefully with antibacterial gel and PPE is applied. Crew members are assigned their own PPE in advance which limits cross-contamination. There are two levels of PPE to consider, Tier 1 and Tier 2. For this film we use Tier 1 PPE, which is essentially medical masks and gloves. This is for when social distancing is strictly enforced. After crew have applied their PPE, every attendee's temperature is checked by our COVID-19 officer, Mel. We use a non-contact thermometer, but Mel wears a visor for extra protection when doing this, in case she needs to break the two metre rule to get an accurate reading. If a high temperature is recorded, the individual must depart immediately. Mel performed a health and safety briefing at the start of the day and for every participant when they arrived. The filming kit was assigned to individual operators, Harry and myself, for the duration of the shoot with no sharing of equipment. The sound recordist AJ brought his own kit. We ruled out lav mics recording everything on the boom and used prominent wireless monitors to avoid the temptation to huddle around cameras as we usually do. Crew carried and rigged their assigned kit, fighting the natural instinct to muck in and help each other out. Before filming, assigned kit was carefully cleaned with antibacterial wipes by each operator, taking extra care with specialised items. This includes wiping pelly cases and handles. If Mel suspects cross-contamination at any point, the item is cleaned again. Throughout the day, gloves and masks are changed regularly using prominent bins, and hand sanitizer are reapplied each time. The COVID officer has to stay vigilant at all times to ensure everyone remains socially distanced. This was made easier by only filming one person at a time. If anyone shows symptoms during production, they must inform the COVID officer immediately. It's a good idea to limit the number of locations, and when changing location, operators continue to handle and transport only their own assigned kit. When it's time to de-rig, gloves are changed again, hands are sanitised, and everything's cleaned once more. Post follows a similar approach to pre-production, remote working and conference calls. The rushes are backed up in multiple locations within the edit team and feedback on the edit happens through Vimeo's brilliant time-based feedback tools. Making a short film for Lois O'Hara 
It was a great opportunity to practice the new ways of working and discover any blockers. The biggest lessons learned were that everything takes more time and nothing can be rushed. The skeleton crew with no sharing policy was certainly a challenge. Everyone wants to help you out and you want to help others out, but you have to decline. This makes moving things from A to B time consuming and exhausting. Overall though, we felt it was a really successful shoot and a real joy to get the camera rolling again after such a bleak and unsettling few months. For now at least, it seems that coronavirus will remain a big part of our lives. Like Perspex Shields in shops, one-way systems in factories and school at the kitchen table, filmmaking is now adapting to the new normal. And the APA guidelines provide a health and safety framework that means we can continue to make brilliant tilt films.